Hello. Welcome to our last session for today. Today we're having a very distinguished uh, professor and expert of the industry. We're having uh, Dr. Mohammed Gharib. Dr. Gharib has PhD in petroleum engineering with a specialty in artificial lift and production engineering and operation. He is a member of petroleum engineering staff, Future University in Egypt. Dr. Gharib is a technical and business professional with over 34 years experience in oil and gas business, operation management, engineering, sales, and teaching. Dr. Gharib was vice president, director, and general manager for different international service and operation companies. Over the, over the past years, he also has played a major role in the practical training for the field staff and engineers in oil and gas production engineering and well operations for different major companies in MENA, USA, Canada, and the Far East. He was SPE Egyptian section president, program and member chairperson. He published and presented over 55 technical papers. He chairs several technical sessions for local and international conferences and workshops. Dr. Gharib is a 2011 and 2020 recipient of the SPE Regional Technical Award in Production and Operation. We can't wait to hear uh, more about uh, the artificial lift technology uh, from Dr. Gharib. Dr. The mic is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Rim. Thanks. Thanks for uh, your time. And uh, Assalamu alaikum, all of you. Uh, I, I would like just to say good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening. This is depending on where you are, you know. Uh, today, I'll try just to give you a very brief uh, overview about the artificial lift technology. One of the main important subject for oil and gas, you know. Uh, artificial lift, it's, it's for the life of the world, you know. I, will, I would like just to be, you know, very summary. I will give you a very summary. I would like to be very light. I, I, I don't, I give you some more pictures, uh, show you some more pictures, uh, some hints about uh, application in the fields, uh, uh, what, what we are using in the fields, uh, what's the problem, what's the limitation of the system, how to choose the artificial lifts, uh, how to differentiate it between all of that. Let us just to start, you know, just uh, my presentation will cover, as I say, you know, just introduction uh, method of artificial lift. Uh, I'll try just to start with, with the systems like a uh, road lift system, give you some hints about uh, and electric submersible, gas lift, progressive cavity, jet bump, plunger lift. And finally, I give you about two, two to three slides about selection of art artificial lift, if there is the times and so on. Uh, generally speaking, you know, uh, in order to know why I need artificial lift and uh, what's mean by artificial lift and what the artificial lift are doing for our wells, you know. Just let us to, to have some brief about uh, our, our technology, our math, and so on. What's make fluid flow from points to the other? In order the flow to flow from one point to the other, you must have a differential pressures. You know, for an example, you know, for the flow to flow from reservoir to the well pores, the reservoir pressures should be higher than the bottom hole flow pressure. <clears throat> then, as soon as you have a bottom hole flow pressure, it's less than the reservoir pressure, the flow will flow from reservoir to the well pores, uh, to the well pore. And depending on the delta B, the amount of flow will be increased and so on. Yeah. And what makes the flow to flow from the bottom to the surface, from the surface to the separators? Because at the end, you know, I need to produce the flow from the reservoir and just bumping to the separator and from separator to the tank. My last point here is the separators. In order for the flow to flow from reservoir and to have the oil from reservoir to the separators, the bottom hole flow pressures because in order the flow will flow from reservoir to BWF if reservoir pressure higher than BWF. Then how the flow will flow from bottom to separate? Bottom hole flow pressure should be higher than the hydrostatic head of the float column from the bottom to the surface. Plus, the well head pressure, the pressure required the flow to flow from the well head to enter the separators. Any type of fluid in order to flow in the pipes or, or just, uh, just let it flow like that, there is a pressure loss, you know, just for the flow to flow. In this case, we call that a flowing well. In this case, you don't need artificial lift. 
because the well flowing to the separators and we give me the required production, the desired production. And this is the best ideal types of the, of the production system of the wells. When I need artificial lift, you need artificial lift if this signs start to be vice versa. If the bottom hole flow pressure is less than the assumption of the BH, it's the hydrostatic head of the fluid plus the well head pressure plus plus the pressure loss. In this case, I required an artificial lift to be lifting the required flow. Then I don't need artificial lift if the bottom hole flow pressure is higher than the three amount of this pressure. I need artificial lift as soon as the bottom hole flow pressure will be higher than this one. Then what's mean of artificial lift? What we are mean by the artificial lift system? Artificial lift system, it's mean that you need to produce a well when the well is not able to produce the required production, the desired production at the required well head pressure. What I mean by the desired production? That's mean sometimes the well can be flowing, but in this case also I need artificial lift, but flowing with less production, with low production. In order to increase the production, the bottom hole flow pressure will be low. Then we'll not be able to lift the fluid to <clears throat> the surface. How can be generally this achieved, you know, generally in the oil fields or gas fields or whatever, how this can be achieved? By the way, artificial lift is used not only for oil wells. Huh? Artificial lift can be used for oil wells, for water wells, for gas wells. Currently, you know, a lot of gas wells, many gas wells worldwide is required artificially lift to lift. However, you know, in order to achieve these requirements, you need to have, first of all, to install a, a device. Devices can be a bumping system, some bumping system, some mechanic, electric, hydraulics, whatever, what to, uh, system. You need just to use this device inside the well just to achieve two functions. First of all, you need to decrease the bottom hole pressure against the reservoir because I need the flow to flow from reservoir to the well poles. But if the flow from, flow from reservoir to the well pole, the bottom hole pre flow pressure here will not be able to lift the flow to the surface. Then the artificial lift in the, in the meantime, the system design the system or just the bombing system is required to increase the bottom hole flow pressure again, just to overcome the hydrostatic head, the pressure loss, the well head pressure. What other is, there is any other way just to achieve this requirement? Yes, I can, it can be either both or just only used by injecting gas into the liquid at some distance of the well. Why are injecting gas and can helping the well to produce? Because by injecting the gas, you are reducing the hydrostatic head you're reducing the average gradients of the fluids from the bottom to the surface. Then this is item will be less. In that case, you know, just you are decreasing the back pressure also against the reservoir because you are reducing the bottom hole from pressure by decreasing the fluid columns and so on. Let us to see graphically how can this looks like, you know, um, if we assume, you know, this is a surface, and this is a depth, and this is a wells, tubing, casing, and this is a reservoir. As a reservoir, if I have a static reservoir pressure, SI, shutting pressure, or static reservoir pressure, the flow in this case, if, if, if will be low reservoir pressure, the flow will be not able to lift the flow to the surface. The flow, the static reservoir pressure will lift the flow up to a certain distance inside the wells. But in order to allow the well to flow, I need to decrease the static bottom hole pressure. Then decreasing the static bottom hole pressures by installing, for example, any device. Device can be bombing system or can be gas lift. If I install device here, then I'm running this device. First function of that device, he will decrease the bottom hole flow pressure and create what we call a drawdown then he reducing the pressure against the formation at the bottom of the well. And in this case, the pressure will be flowing bottom hole from pressure. But if I reduce the pressure further than that, then 
if there is no any artificial lift, in also in that case, the flow will flow, but also the flow will not able to reach to the surface. If I installed any device in the well in that depth, for example, at that depth, at that depth, I install any system, bumping system, whatever, the pressure here we call bump intake pressure. The pressure at the device, at the pump, we call bump intake pressure. What will happen here, you know? After we reduce the pressure by this device, the pressure is generated another, creating, building up another more pressures, giving more energy to the fluids to, uh, with a certain pressure, enough to lift the fluid to the surface with a well head pressure here, capable to produce the fluid, uh, to transfer the fluid to the process. This if I using a mechanical or just whatever device bumping system. For gas lift, the subject is a little bit different. Remember, see here the gradient is fixed gradient, for example, if I assume this all water or just with a few gas and so on. With a gas lift at a certain depth, if I injecting gas at that one, the gas will mix it with the liquid, with the flow, and will reduce the average gradient of the flow. If it's reduced the average gradient of the flow, then the hydrostatic head of the fluids will be less and will be able to keep the well flowing up to the surface. For sure, each type of artificial lift have a certain requirement. It cannot be used for all the wells, you know, and so on, you know. Each type have a certain requirement to run, have a certain um, well types, certain type of fluids, and, and so on, you know. Then, if we start to divide, div divide the artificial lift, we can divide the artificial lift as, as an energy source. What the source of energy? How is lifting? I say, you know, there is two, two ways just to achieve the requirement of artificial lift, either with gas assist or with a mechanical. Then when we start to divide artificial lift, we divide the systems into two main category systems. Either formation pressure assist, then you are using the formation pressure and you assisted the formation pressure to keep the well flown, then use the well energy. They are not using a mechanical device, just running the well or bumping. Or we can use what we call mechanical assist. I assist the fluid to produce from the bottom to the surface using a mechanical type of, of, of artificial lift or mechanical assist. For formation assist, there is the main common, there is different type of artificial lift. But generally speaking, the main common is the gas lift, plunger lift, and foam lift. You know, these other three main types of artificial lift usually used as to use a formation pressure and assist the well with injecting some gas or just uh, using the, the, the well gas energy to lift the fluids and so on, depend on reducing the hydrostatic head. Or a mechanical or just mechanical assist. And generally speaking, there is several times more than that, but whatever used in the oil and gas industry, so for world wide, they are, they are using what we call road lift system or sporocating sucker road bombing system, progressive cavity bombing system, hydraulic lift systems can be different type or electric submersible bombing system. I'll try just to go through each one of these and just plunger lift and gas lift in, in very few, what's the system, what's the system component, uh, how the system is, is working, uh, what's the system limitation, what's the advantage, because for, for sure each type of that artificial lift have some advantage and disadvantage and limitation. For example, there is a wells can be running very well with a, a electric submersible bomb and maybe is not able the road lift to lift the system and vice versa for the gas lift and, and so on. This table just summarize what I said before, you know, for each type of artificial lift, there is a certain criteria, certain application you need to use. For example, you know, uh, if we go to road lift system at the maximum depths, we found the road lift system can be used up to 16,000 feet. However, there is a field so worldwide, like in some field in Oklahoma, some field in some other area, really it's producing from almost 18,000 feet. But there is also limitation when we are going, we're going deep with all artificial lift systems, not only road lift systems. 
but road lift system is limited to that 16,000 feet. Progressive cavity cells bounding system can, can be reached to up to 12,000 feet or just around 3,000 feet. Even with progressive cavity bounding system, 12,000 feet, it, it's very high because progressive cavity bumping system is sensitive to temperatures, sensitive to pressure and so on. But however, there are some people succeeded to reach to that uh, depth, you know. Gas lift, for example, also 18,000 feet. Plunger lift can be 19,000 feet and so on, you know. This gives you what is the, the, the maximum depth you can run. At that maximum depth, sometimes really you need, you need a special design, you need to, to care about design, but the average depth for majority of artificial lift like road lift and PCB can be run up to 5,000, 6,000 feet. The gas lift can be deeper, you know, depending on volume of gas, uh, the available of, uh, pressure of the gas and, and, and so on, you know. And also production, you know. For example, if I need a high productions, I cannot use progressive cavity bombing system. When you start to looking for a high production wealth, usually we are looking for electric submersible bomb, or hydraulic bombing system, or gas lift, you know, you can use gas lift if there is enough gas, enough fluids, enough pressure to use. Pressure, uh, temperature is sensitive also to all type of artificial lift, you know. Corrosion handling, you know, if you look, you know, just uh, to some type of artificial lift, for example, like gas lift, we say excellent to corrosion handling. What's the mean of corrosion handling? If you have, for example, sour gas like H2S, CO2, have a very high salinity water, salt water, and so on, you know. Then all the mechanical style, artificial lift system will be poor, not poor, you know, just required a special type of metallurgy in order to run that system. Running life will be less because the failure will be high and, and so on. Gas handling, you know, for example, BCB, it, it's, it's very poor for gas handling. If I have a well with a very high gas or ratio, then First option come to my mind, what? Gas lift, plunger lift, can be uh, sometimes other type of, of, of artificial lift if I use a special downhole separators and so solid, solid like sand, debris, especially with mature fields and the field after frack and so on, you will find uh, a very high amount of sand you can produce. What type of artificial you need to use? Also uh, fluid gravity, if, if I have, you know, just uh, uh, fluid gravity, you know, just a uh, high fluid gravity or low fluid gravity, what type of artificial lift. For an example, progressive cavity bombing system, cannot, it's not recommended to use for fluid, for light crude oils because they have high aromatics and so on, you know. What type of servicing equipment for each artificial lift required to repair the downhole, to change the downhole equipment? And this affecting too much in the operating cost, remember? you are, since you put your well in artificial lift, you are looking for the lifting cost. Main part of your lifting cost is how to repair the failure, how to change the failures. Uh, if you are using a, a certain type of, of work over or just surface activity at the well site, how much can be costing you? For example, if we look to the gas lift, the gas lift only requires slick line, wire line if you have a problem with a gas lift valve and so If we look to the electric submersible bomb, it's required the work over rig, require the rig and the well will stop for a couple of days and you need to pull out the tubing and the, the lifting cost is, will be a very high. Then when you start to select your artificial lift, one of the main important item is economics, is the operation, how to look to that, you know. Uh, second, after that, you know, the prime mover, how I run the system. Do I need electric power? Do I need a diesel engine? Do I need a gas only? Do I need only just use the, the, the wheel energy like a plunger lift? I don't need any outside source and so on. For offshore, you know, you, you know, just for offshore, there is a platform and you are limited with the platform capacity and area, what type of artificial lift. Road lift system is very limited to use for, for, for offshore, you know. But if you see gas lift, it's, it's excellent for offshore and, and and so on, you know. Electric submersible bump can be, hydraulic jet bump is maybe also is better than electric submersible bump. Finally, system efficiency. System efficiency, and when we say system efficiency or total system efficiency, what does that mean? 
total system efficiency, as I said before, artificial lift is an economics. Since you put the oil in artificial lift, you need to control your lifting cost, how much I pay to lift each barrel. One of the main important parameters here is powers. How much power I need to lift my required production. How much power is lost to lift this my production. Then the system efficiency is efficiency of the total system. It's, 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 it's about how much power I gain, much power I gain, how much fluids, how much pressures giving to that fluid to lift to the surface. And this is divided to how much horsepower I feed it to the system at the surface. If you look here, you know, all the, the hydraulic system or gas lift have a very low um, system efficiency due to what? Uh, due to just uh, uh, a mechanical uh, or just a flow um, pressure loss and, and so on. Let us start with, with, with the other uh, system, one of the main system, what we call the reciprocating road lift system. I start with the reciprocating road lift system because worldwide, at the number of wells, more than 72% to 75% of artificially lifted wells are using reciprocating road lift system. By the way, more than 90 to 94 to 95% of the oil producing wells worldwide are artificially lifted. Out of that, more than 70, 72% are used road lift system. We'll see now from the advantage of that system, why the majority is used road lift system uh, of, of the wood. As a number of wells, you know, when I start to compare number of wells, yes, it's road lift system. But if I start to compare at the volume of production, electric submersible pump will be is the first artificial lift system. What are the main component of reciprocating road lift system and how it is working, how it is running? For all type of pumping system at artificial lift, you need to have subsurface downhole pump, regardless uh, electric submersible, hydraulics, uh, whatever you have. You need to have downhole pumps. For sucker roads, the downhole pumps or sucker road pumping system, the downhole pumps, it's called positive displacement bump that's displaced fluid after fluid and they build, build pressures based on just because they displaced the fluids and displace the other wave of fluids and so on you know how it's working how it's running if we look to a sucker road pumping system we'll go in details for a separate lectures after that but however now just in very summary you know for all sucker road downhole bumps have two check valves this is one and this is one what we call nothing valve, four and seat valve, you know. While we are going and up, it's going upstroke. In the upstroke, what, what will happen, you know? The first pole, first valve, check valve, is moving against the fluid. Since it's moving against the fluid, this valve will be closed. Then isolated all the hydrostatic head from the, the lower valve, standing valve, then allow any pressure at the formation here to open that valve and to fill that chamber of, of the bump, you know. At the end, then this chamber will complete fill with the new fluids. Then you start to go down. When you start to go down, you go down against a closed volume, a closed chamber. This pole, you found this area is closed here, you know. Then due to delta B, creating very high delta B, this pole will be open and displace the fluid what we are produced in the upstroke to be displaced to above that one is called plunger to above the plunger and the cycle is repeat. How this bump is running? How this bump is going up and down? Who just transfer the, the, the motion to the bump is up and down? There is, there is a part, what we call this downhole bump. There's a part is called road string. The second road string, it's a mechanical link connecting the downhole bumps. There is a different configuration of downhole bumps, depends on, on the flow type, depth, and so on. However, this road string is just connecting the downhole bump to the surface equipment. Surface equipment is just generated reciprocating motion up and down. This reciprocating motion up and down transferred to the downhole bump via what we call the road string. Generally speaking, worldwide, more than, for example, 90% of, 
of the wells of just 80, 85% use standard road strings, you know, just jointed of steel or fiberglass roads. The majority is steel roads and connecting to each other with a standard lenses, you know, like 25 feet or 30 feet and so on. With a new technology currently, you know, just in order to produce a deviated wells or horizontal wells and so on, the, the manufacturing introduced what we call continuous roads, core roads. Road is continuous, it's not connecting to each other. Just there is one joint connecting from bottom to the surface. It's eliminating all that cabling. It's reducing the pressure loss due to the, due to the flow to flow from uh, around this cabling. It's reducing the friction between, cable, between cabling roads and the tubing, especially for deviated well. This allows a road lift system to run for horizontal walls, to produce horizontal walls. No one can be imagined about if a road lift system can be run horizontal walls. Just, uh, we have a plenty of, of wells in all the bites uh, running now uh, using road lift system for horizontal walls. What else, you know, for the surface equipment, all of us know that Sucker Road is running with what you call the beam pumping system. It's just going up and down like this. But currently, really, with a new technology, there's different reciprocating. All what you need, reciprocating motion up and down. Reciprocating motion up and down in order to produce more flow, you are limited here with the stroke lenses. Stroke lenses, just how far this we can go up, up and down, how far you're running this way. Then the manufacturing is introducing a different type of reciprocating bump motion, like a mechanical one, this is what they call rotaflex or hydraulics, one like a, a SSI units or just a, like this, another unit. This is the main component of road lift system. Down all bumps, road string, different type of road string, surface bumping units, beam bumping, or just a, a vertical reciprocating bumping unit. Uh, plus is the prime movers, you know, the prime movers here can be electric motor, can be diesel engine. The main function of the prime mover is just to feed the bumping units with the rotations, with the rotary motions, and the bumping unit transfers the rotary motions or change the rotary motion to a reciprocating motion up and down in order to activate it, the downhole uh, bump. We see the sucker road was a main component of sucker road, all is mechanical. The road lift system, all it is mechanical. One of the good things about road lift system, we can consider one of the high system efficiency, especially if we are using core road, what's continuous road. If you are using a long stroke bombing units, the system efficiency here can be reached over 50%. Then another 50% or just 45% can losing due to friction or running the downhill bombs and so on. One of the good things about being bombing system that's easy to optimize. All the optimization control for this beam bumping system, it's available and you can control and optimize the downhole pumps from the surface. You can install the surface device, which from surface de device, you can predict how the downhole pumps work. What is the performance of downhole pumps? Not only that, you know, currently the, the, the people is using the well controller, surface controller, it, at the well testing, they know how much the well can be produced. Not only that, they know also what is the pump intake pressure. From pump intake pressure, you can collect, you can calculate what is the bottom hole flow pressure. One of the good, good things about road lift system, and as I said, you know, 70 more than 70 percent, 72 percent of the wells worldwide running with road lift systems, uh, with road lift system, because it is economical artificial lift system you can easy to repair in the field. As soon as you are by your equipment, you don't need the manufacturing or service company to do repair your equipment. You can repair the downhole pumps at your workshop at, at the field sites. With one or two technicians, he can repair a chain. Even repairing downhole pumps is not costly. The majority of the cost for the beam pumping system, it's in the surface. 75% of the cost, it is in the surface equipment and the rest in the downhole equipment. If you have a damage or, in down, or failure in downhole pumps, downhole equipment, then 
with a few hundred dollars, you can repair and change the downhole. Well, as a positive displacement, what means you can create a high well head pressure to displace fluid, whatever the area you have. I know there is some beam pumping system or just sucker road pumping system using to move fluid from well sites to almost more than 20, 25 kilometers to the nearest facilities. And so, you know, easy to upgrade to change the material. For example, if you use downhole bumps with a certain metallurgy, alloy steel, so just carbon steel, and you start to find some corrosion environment, CO2 uh, or just H2S, uh, start to see in a corrosion environment, start to have easy, easy you can, you can upgrade this bump and change the bump with a different metallurgy with, with a very minimum cost. Flexibility is a very flexible type of artificial lift to match the change in well production and well pressures. For example, if I design the system to produce a 1,000 barrel per day, and with the initial life of the reservoir, high pressure productivity is good, and with the time reservoir start to be depleted or start to have some skin and so on, and the production is dropped to, to 50 barrel per day. With the same system, you can change stroke lengths, you can change stroke per minutes, you can uh, boot the well just on timers, in timing modes. Uh, you can you can change do a lot of things. You can change the downhole bumps and so on, and you can match it. You can match the well, the, the system capability with the production from the well. If the fluid type change and and so on. One of the good things here is called high salvage value. High salvage value. Usually, with you design your artificial lift system for the life of the well. Keep this in mind. I design my artificial lift for the life of the well. It's not good, you know, to change, to change the type of artificial lift. Yes, there is several conditions I need to change the type of artificial lift, but if I am able to use one type of artificial lift for the life of the well, that will be a, a good thing. High salvage value, I can use all the majority, I said the majority of the cost of this type of artificial lift in the service equipment. 75%. Then if this well is depleted or is watered out, have 100% water cut, I can move to all the systems these to another well. Not only that, I can, if this system is obsoleted or just completely damaged or so, I can sell this system as a scrap materials and we can give me a very high return on cost and, and so on. Sorry. Uh, about the uh, limitation for, for this system. One of the major limitation for, for beam pumping system is a potential for tubing and road wear. Remember, you know, this road is going up and down, going up and down with each stroke. Going up and down, that's mean, if you are running this one, this, this unit up and down, one time per minute, that you are going up and down 1,440 time per day. And if you are 10 stroke per minute, 10 times only per minutes up and down, then you run 14,400 times per day. Remember, there is a coupling, there is a tubing. The well is not a completely straight 100% vertical. You know, there is a deviated, there is some deviation, there is some buckling, and so on. There is a, a potential for tubing wheels. And when we design, we need to take care about that and we need to take this into consideration. You know, one of, one of also the limitation of that is the depth. Because the artificial lift system, just the, 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 uh, uh, the road lift system as artificial lift system, it's lifting the float in the upstroke. Remember, when you say in the upstroke, traveling valve is closed, then the road string is lifting the traveling valve, and the traveling and the above the traveling valve will be all the weight of the fluid plus the weight of the road itself. Then the upstroke, we are lifting two weights, weight of the fluid plus weight of the road then these two weights will increase and the steel have a certain capability, certain limits for lifting capacity. Then we we'll start, when we start going down, this is capability will be less and so, and so on. For that reason, road lift system, it's not recommended to use for high volume deep wells. For high volume deep wells, deep well, there is other type of artificial lift. When we start to go deeper and deeper, with reciprocating road lift system, capability of production will be less. 
For example, I said in, in the first table that road lift system can be run to 16,000, 17,000, 18,000 feet. But at that depth, you are limited with production. You cannot produce more than 50, 100 barrels per day if you are lucky, you know, to do that. Uh, another, another uh, some limitation of this one, you know, is the environment and, you know, because the system is going up and down and who's control, control the surface here? You have here what you call the end of the road string is a polished road and polished road is moving against stuffing box. And stuffing box is a rubber, you know, with the time and with the water cut increased or just gas increased, stuffing box, the rubber can be, you know, can be broken and there is a potential of, of leak and so on. The gas oil ratio, well, once the gas oil ratio is increased, the volumetric efficiency will decrease for that. However, currently in the new technology, there's a special bump can be run and used to handle a very high gas oil ratio, like what we call the uh, variable slippage bumps. Uh, and, and, and these bumps can be using to handle a very high gas oil ratio wells and so on. This is just a very summary about the road lift system, you know, because if you want to go into the road lift system, we need at least two, three weeks to do that. However, second main artificial lift system using worldwide, and it represents the highest volume of artificial lift used in, in the worldwide and so on, especially in the Middle East and some other area. It's called electric submersible pumping system, ESP pumping system. The electric submersible bombing system is a type of artificial lift system. It, the main principle of this one is not displaced float, not a positive displacement like sucker road to displace float, no. It's used a multi-stage centrifugal pump. Bump centrifugal is a multi-stage to lift uh, my production of the float production. With the concept of centrifugal force is, is given, creating a centrifugal force for the float in order to lift flow from one stage to the other stage. How this can come in order to know that how it's working, let us know what are the main components of this system, you know. If you look to this graph, all the artificial lift, as I said, you know, have two main components, surface and downhole. Downhole component, you must have a bump. It's what you call it here, bump, it's multi-stage centrifugal bumps and you need to have something to operate to run the bump. I have an electric motor, submersible electric motor, motor running inside the, the fluid, you know. This motor is electric motor and the bump is lifting fluid in order the motor to run the bump and the bump is also full with the fluid. I need to have a separation between the motor to the, and the bump in order just to not, what you know, to avoid electricity, you know, just to burn the motor and so on. Then we have what we call seal protection or electric protection. And for the bump, you have intake. Intake, this is the part or the area where is the flow enter to the pumps and, and so on. Plus electric cable, the cable is connecting the power from the surface to the down hole motor in order just to, to feed the motor with the requirement power and the motor is rotated and the rotating transfers via the seals intake to the bump and the bump is can be lifted in the flow. Surface equipment, I have a controller for like all type of artificial lift. I have transformers because it's electric power. Then I need a certain type of power, certain type of volt and amp and hertz to run this uh, system, you know. Sometimes I, 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 I need a variable uh, frequency drive just in order to optimize the downhole bumps and so plus the well head, special well head in order to allow the cable to bath feed through, through the well heads and, and so on. You know. This just gives you a, a, a cutaway in, on, on the downhole, ESP downhole pumps. You know. I said the uh, downhole pumps of ESP consists of multi-stage centrifugal mount. Each one of these stage stages stacks on the shaft. This is a shaft and this is a stage, or this is a just mounted or just stacked inside the shaft in order just to produce the flow. This is the shape of the stage, you know. We have different number of stages. The number of stage depends on the height I need to lift, how much this charge pressure I need to lift. 
because the stage have two function, you know, just, it's just producing float and lifting floats, you know. For each stage, the size and configuration, shape of the stage, it will be selected based on the volume, what I need based on the production rates. But number of stage I selected based on the head I need to lift it. How much hydrostatic head on, on net lift I need to lift, then I calculated. Each stage, for example, can give me 100 feet. My net lift, it's 1,000 feet. Then 1,000 divided on to 100 give me the number of stage I need just to stack over this shaft in order to produce this, uh, this well using the electric submersible bulb. What the main component of each stage? Each stage of that also have two main components, you know, one called impellers and diffuser. This is the impellers and this is the diffusers, you know. Then each type, each stage have two main component, impeller and diffuser. I said in the previous slides that the principles of operation for centrifugal pump, it's creating a centrifugal force to the flow. Centrifugal force created by the impeller because the impeller is rotated on the shaft, but the diffuser is not rotated. Then when the, the impeller is rotated and the fluid come out of the impellers, come with a certain force and this force hit the wall of the diffuser and diffuser transfer to the second stage with, a, with, with more heads. Then each stage build head after the other stage. And, and sorry. How it's running, how it's going, just maybe to be a little bit clear in this house, the diffusers and the impeller is running. This is the diffusers, these are impellers, this is the shaft, this is the uh, impellers, and this is the diffusers. You know, the fluid start to enter, and when the shaft impellers start to bend and give energy to the fluid, when it start to give energy to the fluid, this is in the red arrow. The, the fluid is going out and found the heads of the wall of the diffuser. The diffuser is transferred to the second impellers and so on. Okay, then the diffuser redirected the fluid to the second the upper, upper one of the, of, of the one. Each one of the stage for the electric submersible bumps have a one, what you call the performance curve, if like this. What the performance curve, we have a different performance curve for each one of the, uh, of, of, for each one of the stage. Each performance curve represents three curves. One of these curves, it's the head against the production. How much production I will produce, how much the head this can be left. For example, this type of impellers, if I need to produce 3,000 barrel per day, these impellers can create for me, for example, it's 48 feet. Then if I have a well with 480 feet with this impeller, then I need to divide 480 feet with 40 feet, 48 feet, then I need 10 of this stage to lift the wells. What else here represent here? What's the efficiency of this stage at that production? This is efficiency curve. How much horsepower is required to rotate only this one stage? This is a brake horsepower you need to require. However, you know, in, 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 the, in the course of electric submersible bump, we can go more in details and we show how we can do that. However, all the, all, all, all the uh, electric submersible bump have this type of stage and have a different uh, curves and so on. What is an electric motor? Electric motor for the electric submersible pumps, it's what you call, it provides a power. It's three phase motor, two pool motors, you know, inductions motors, you know, and all that motors is filled with, with oil. There's a special component inside the motor. We, we can show in details the motor in, in, in ECB, uh, 
course and so on. But however, all the motor is filled with, with oil in order to keep the motor cool and also to create some lubrication and insulation for, uh, for the motor, you know. I can use two motors in, in just one over the other, what you call the tandem motor to increase the capacity. I cannot connect the motor direct to the bump. Between the motors and the bump, I must have what you call protectors or seal, because the motor is running with electric, very high electric uh, powers, and the bump is just generated fluid. There is a fluid. If the fluids mix it with the motor, the motor will get burned and, and so on. And in order to run this motor or, or just to operate that motor, you need the cables. You need a cable to transfer the power because the power is transferred from the surface. You need a cable to transfer the power from surface to the cable like this green one, you know. And this cable, there is different type of cable, different insulation. Remember this cable also will be submersed in the flow. This flow can be water, this flow can be gas, can be mixed and so on. Then I need a, a, to have a very good insulation of, of all that, you know just different type of insulation, type of, of insulation and type of, 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 uh, of cables is depend on downhole conditions and so on. Even the size, depend on how much power I need to transfer, even the shape, you know, however in the market, depend size, condition, types, well geometry, we found different type of cables, different geometry of cables, different insulations of cables and, and so on. As a surface layout for electric submersible bump system, really, I need in, in most cases to have two transformers. Why I have two transformers? Remember, the electric motor for uh, electric submersible bump is running at high volt. And at the well sites, either you have a low volt, just or medium volt, like volt generated from generators, or just to have a high volt, volt just transfer from a turbine and so on. And volt transfer from turbine like will be very high volt, you know, it's 10K, 11K kilovolt and, and so on, you know. Then we need to reduce this as a required volt for the, 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 uh, the required volts for the downhole mode. Then I need to transfer just to reduce the, power supply. Sometimes I, I, maybe I need only one transformer, but if, if in case like this, I need to, to step down, step down what we just step down the power from the overhead lines or whatever I have to the variable speed drive or just two controllers. And from that, I need to have another transformer to step up to the volt required for the downhole electric motor because not all the motor running was the same volt. There is a motor required 1,000 volt, another motor required 1,100 <coughs> volt, another motor required 2,000 volts, and so on. Then, you know, just to need a transformer just to control what is required volt to transfer to this motor and so on, plus the whole head and, and so on. What's the advantage? What's the limitation for this is electric submersible bump system? Advantage, it's really one of the high volume artificial lift system. When you start to select your artificial lift system and came in, in your front view, this high volume well, first choice of artificial lift, one of the first choice of artificial lift will be the electric submersible bumping system. And system, it's, it's good, easy also just to control, to monitoring, you know, uh, easy to adapt based on downhole condition or just based on casing condition and casing size, you know, it's not required too much uh, uh, footprint like sucker road in the well head, only a few Christmas, Christmas tree brush, just uh, some panels and, and, and so on, you know. Uh, it can be running for deviated with a certain dog leg severity deviated wells. It, 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 it's, you know, it's one, one of the advantage. One of the limitation, we need to have a high source of power. Because really, this type of artificial lift required high power and is consumed a little bit high powers and so on. One of the major disadvantage for this artificial lift system as a as an electric submersible bump 
is limited adaptability to major change in reservoir. Remember, I said second road, it's very adaptable, it's very flexible in, in, in uh, uh, with a reservoir change in production or just in, in pressure. But here in, in, in electric submersible bump, it's not uneasy, it's limited, you know. If you remember the performance curve I showed you before, there is a, a, a yellow area in the middle. You need to run your pump within this area. It, if you go out of this area, the pump will be, you know, the running life of the pump will be a very, very short and easy can be a failure in down all pumps um, uh, uh, states and, and, and so on, you know. It's not easy to run, you know, just with a high viscosity flow, you know and also sensitive to the gas and free gas and so on. Other two major problem for, or major limitation for electric submersible bump is higher pooling cost. Higher pooling cost because electric submersible bump, it's run on the tubing. At any times you have a problem with a motor, cable, seal, uh, whatever you have down holes, you need to lift all your well completion in order to change the downhole bumps. But also, after you pull all that, you're not able to repair on the self. You need to send to the manufacturing either to change or to repair. It's irreparable at the field, not an easy to repair on the field. Because after repair, also you need to run a test and you need to create another performance curve and, and so on for this one. Let us to go to another artificial lift, one of the realities. Uh, a lot of people like artificial lift. Uh, this artificial lift using the bust uh, too much and start to just uh, limited using. And then now, nowadays start to be uh, more use of gas lift after unconventional and due discovery for, of the unconventional gas. And so the people start to make use more for gas lift and so on. What is a gas lift? Gas lift, is an extension of the flowing wells. Gas lift, it's like a, one of the flowing wells pictures, you know. You can treat it as a flowing wells after you're injecting gas as the performance and the, you know, just the controlling and, and so on, you know. Then the people consider this is like one of the flowing wells, extension of the flowing wells process and so on. You know. Generally speaking, there is two types of gas left, you know. Like this one in the pictures, you know, this one you are injecting gas as a bottom, continuous injecting gas in the bottom, and you are lighting the weight of the fluids you are lifting, then you are reducing the bottom hole flow pressure is, is, is just uh, resulting from the hydrostatic head of this fluid column. You allow the formation to produce, and meanwhile, you are lifting these fluids. There's another type of, of, of gas lift called, called intermittent flow. It's not continuously injecting gas. You are injecting gas, let the well flowing, and then once the production starts to drop, you are re-injecting gas again. This is depend on what type of wells, uh, what type of, of reservoir, how much is the reservoir pressures, and, and so on. Each type of, uh, of lifting of just uh, gas lift condition Gas lift system requires a certain condition and, and so on. Again, all type of artificial lift have two main components, surface and downhole. What are the main component downhole for gas lift? Yes, it is an extension of flowing wells, but even if an extension of flowing wells, I need to insert a device in the wells to use it just to, to give me the, the main option of the gas lift uh, requirements. What, what this is a downhole equipment for gas lift. You have two main parts for downhole equipment for gas lift. These two main parts is called gas lift valves and gas lift mandrels, where is a valve installed inside the mandrel. If we are just focusing one, this is a gas lift valve and mandrel. This gas lift valve and mandrel. This gas lift valve and mandrel. If we have a little bit, you know, focus on that, how it looks like, like the gas lift valve and mandrel side. This is the gas lift valves. You know, gas lift valves just have two point of seals. You have ports here and you have adjusted pressure inside the valve. The valve can open at a certain delta B. These valves 
installed inside the mandrel. The mandrel here, here have also some holes, some pores, which will be against these holes, and this seal will be in the bottom, and these seals will be in the top. Then when we are forcing the, the gas from the casing here, the gas enter to the gas lift board valves and bus from the gas lift body and going inside the tubing and just mix it with the fluid here and lift it to the surface. This is just, you know, how it will be looks like when the valves start to be open and the gas start to be go. In the surface, you know, I have in the surface for the gas lift, you know, there is, you need high pressures. You need to compress the gas, you know, how just to, 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 to enter the gas inside the annulus. And so you need a gas to compress the gas inside the wells. And the gas required compressors. And you need regulators, valves regulate to control the volume of gas, because it's not good sometimes to inject more gas. The gas can have some slippage and delay the flow. However, we, in the gas lift course, we can go in detail in, in this valve. Then we have a certain controllers can be controlled, the volume of gas and so on. Plus the well head, the well head for the gas lift is just a normal Christmas tree and, and so on. What advantage and limitation? Gas lift really, it's, it's, a, it's a cheap type of artificial lift have a very high degree of flexibility and design rate because uh, I can control the volume of gas. I can control uh, what we can, uh, the depth of a gas uh, uh, injection, where is I need to inject the gas and, uh, and so on. By that way, I can, I can have how much put more flow pressure I can create. All the valves can be installed and retrieved by the wire line. It's, you know, there is no moving part inside uh, the tubing. Then if there is a sand or debris, uh, easy just to can handle sand or debris and so on. The tubing is full, you know, just there is no restriction inside the tubing. If we need to do any wire line operation in the wells, like uh, re uh, reperforation, uh, do some acidizing, uh, pressure monitoring, uh, whatever, you can run inside the tubing. The well head is only a Christmas tree, you know, one compressor can fit more than one well, two, three wells for that reason. The gas lift usually is ideal for, for, for offshore operations while the platform is, is, is very small and limited and, and you know, just uh, it's not required a well head, too much well head, only Christmas tree. One compressor can run four, five, six wells, you know, and so on. But as in meanwhile, it's required a very high gas, very high volume of gas. Uh, or just well, you know, one well sometimes will be not economical because the compressors is expensive unless you have a very high pressure gas wells near to these uh, wells, you know. It's very sensitive, sensitive it's, a, it's a extension of long well, then it's very sensitive to bottom hole, change in bottom hole flow pressure. Not only that, that it's all also it's so sensitive to well head back pressure. If you have any back pressure, it's creating a back pressure in the formation and can produce production. The other type of artificial lifts in the markets, which also really it's considered one of the recent artificial lifts is using since more than 30, 40 years in commercial phase of artificial lift and start to gain um, more, you know, more application in, in, in the area and so on. It's called progressive cavity bumping system. What is a progressive cavity bumping system and when it's used progressive cavity bumping system and what's the difference of progressive cavity bumping system than the second road and, and so on. You know. Progressive cavity bumping system is also a positive displacement artificial lift system. It's similar like road lift system. Then you have two type of mechanical or just bumping system is a positive displacement. It's the second road bombing system or reciprocating bombing system and the progressive cavity bombing system, you know, and also transfer flow, how it's transferred the flow, transfer flow by progressing through the bomb, you know, by a sequence of taking a, a small volume of fluid and displaced and by rotation to displace to the other cavity from cavity to the other for that reason will be a positive from cavity 
to 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 the other uh, cavity and up to to the surface and so on you know what are the main component of this and how it's working in order just to understand how it's working system we need to uh, to know what are the main components the downhole component for the progressive cavity bombing you really have two main components the pump this is a pump of the progressive cavity and the rod string you know the pump it's like you know have two main components it's a stators this is a black one and this is just gray one it's the rotors the rotor when it's rotated inside the stator this is a stator this is the rotors and this is a cavity area where the fluids can be entered to the cavity and the stators one who start to rotate this is a arm of the stator come to that cavity then displace the amount of this fluid from here to here and then from here to here and and so on plus similar like the second road bombing system road strain and road strain can be a connected joints of the roads or a continuous road strain and so on plus the wheel head the wheel head is just a, a wheel head what we call the drive head there's a different type of drive head the main function of drive head is just to supply a rotary motion not a reciprocating motion like a second road is a rotary motion to the road string with this rotary motion of the road string transferred to the rotors of the downhole bumps and rotor rotated inside the bcp bumps and so on. plus the well heads for the bcp and so on there's different type because the bcp really is used for different application and different depths is different condition and it's sensitive to the type of fluid the viscosity of the fluids uh, and so on one of the good application for the beam for the progressive cavity bombing system is a heavy crude oil and really it's initially it's it's uh, introducing to the to introduce to the market to produce the heavy crude oil you know? and this different type of shape and condition depend on the how much pressure i need to 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 lift it, how much volume I need to lift it, what type of fluids, and so on. You know, what's the advantage you know of, of this system and so on? One of the main advantage it is the highest total system efficiency. We said the road lift system is good total system efficiency. Gas lift is the lowest total system efficiency. Electric submersible bomb is a medium total system efficient. That's mean a pressure loss. Sorry, the power loss is medium, but BCP is the highest total system efficiency. Total system efficiency in the PCB can reach up to 75%. In normal cases, it's 60, 65%, because there is a direct rotation from the drive motors to the road and the road to the downhole bumps and so on. You know, it's have a very good ability to produce a viscous flow. If you have your well with the high viscosity is the first choice when you're selecting artificial lift come to PCB if it's able to run at a certain depths and, and temperatures. And also since about majority of 50% of the bomb is consists of a rubbers, then it's, it's, it's a good, have a good ability to produce very high sand content flow. There is no valves inside the bomb like a second road, or like the other, you know. The capital investment is one of the cheapest, it's not the cheapest, but one of the cheapest artificial lift compared to the PCB, uh, compared to, sorry, to the electric submersible bomb, and compared to the road lift uh, system, you know. Uh, also, also, you know, surface equipment is very small and doesn't require very quiet operations and so on. But also they have a limitation in this, some two major limitations. One of the major limitation here is the depth. It's limited to the depth because with the depths, usually the fluid how transfer from cavity to the other by this rotor and, and, and stator. Who's sealing the fluids, the cavity from one cavity to the other? The sealing points between the stators and the rotor rotor here. And the, the, the stator is the rubbers. Then the ceiling is not very high you know, they are not have very high capacity of, of sealing very high pressure. Then it's sensitive to delta B around this. And with the pressure, the pre with the depth, the pressure increase. Not only the pressure increase with the depth, 
all sorts of pressuring reserves. And since 50% of these bombs have rubbers, and, and the rubber is sensitive to the temperatures and can be swelling, can be cutting, and so on, then it's also sensitive to that. Not only that, also sensitive to flow. Also, why sensitive to flow? Because 50% of the rubber is all the state of is the rubber. And with increasing the API at high API, the percentage of aromatics like benzene, toluene, and so on in the fluid will be increased. In that case, you know, this can be creating some swelling to the road lift, to the, to the stator, and the stator can be damaged. Required, as I said, a, a constant fluid levels above the bump and so on. And its production, its limited production compared to the ESP and gas lift and the yield bump. We'll see the yield bump in the next coming slides. Other type of artificial lift, which is also currently used in offshore and the remote areas and so called uh, jet pumping system. Jet pumping system, yes, it's used, but it's not it, applicable or just not using like a same percentage of road lift system or PCB or ESP or gas lift. However, I have also two main component. Surface component, it's uh, just uh, bumps, high pressure bumps and vessel to separate the, the gas and pressure in case you are separating of, if you are not separating and you have a dead liquids, then maybe you, you don't need that. Plus the downhole bumps, downhole bumps have three main components. This is the, the jet pumping system is work in the principle of the Venturi system. How is work in the principle of the Venturi effect system? How it's work, you know? This is the main component of downhole pumps. This is a nozzle, this is a throat, uh, and the diffuser It's around these two, two, two areas, you know. And the red one, if you assume the red one, it is the fluids, you are injecting fluids from the tubing or the casing. When you are injecting fluids, it's passing to the nozzle. The nozzle have a very small area. This area of the nozzle can be around five millimeters or six millimeters. And you are injecting very high power fluid, very high rate, like 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 barrel per day in order to bath from this area, it's all the pressures in, in, inside this float as a pressure power transfer to the velocity energy. They are losing the power as a pressure transfer to the energy. What if you allow the fluid from the formation enter from here, just in this is low pressure area and mix it with high velocity fluid, low pressure fluid. When it's mixed it here with the fluid and just mix it in bigger area here, it's just the, the energy is lost here in the velocity is back again to the pressure and also this we can go on details and we can have some animation how it works when we go on details for the jet pumping system. This is just a typical two type of jet pumping system. This is the casing and this is the tubing and this one is a jet pumping system. The red one is the fluids, the power fluid which you are required to operating the jet pumping system. This is a completion, and this is a jet pumping system. And this is, you need to have a backers because you are injecting fluid from the tubing or injecting fluid from the casing. If you are injecting fluid from the tubing like here and the fluid, fluid bathing from the nozzle, and this is one is the formation fluid, the formation fluid bathing through a small channels here to the low pressure area, one is mixing with a high flow here and have another high pressures in, in this area and bus again and back to the casing and vice versa if you are injecting from the casing. The, the good advantage of this system, it's no moving parts, high volume capability, you can produce 4,000, sorry, 50,000, 60,000 barrel per day if, if, if it's allowed and you have enough reservoir pressure and productivity, very high productivity. There is no any moving parts. Then you can use it for deviated wells. It can be used for uh, horizontal wells and, and so on. The pump, you know, it's not required any rig or surface to just to retrieve or just to install the pump. You can drop the pump from the surface and you can retrieve the pump by reverse circulation. You can injecting fluid from the casing and you retrieve the pump to the surface. Then the 
the surface operation is very cheap. One of the very cheap surface operation for that. It's for the gas, it's similar like the gas lift. With one package of my surface equipment, I can run different wells, you know. It's one of the main limitation of that. It's really production relative to the bottom hole flow pressure. You need to have a very high, very good bottom hole flow pressure. You need to have a very special bottom hole um, assemblies. But in, if you have sliding sleeve, down hole sliding sleeve, it can be used. Since it's a, a hydraulic system and there is a power and flowed and you lost majority of your power in the nozzle, then you have, it's a very low hydrostorse power efficiency. One of the very lowest total system efficiency, which is, can be reached to 10%. One also of safety hazards is required a high pressure at the surface. It's high pressure can be reached to 3,000, 4,000 PSI with a bombing station in case you have any broken of this line and some one of operators work on that area, he can get be hurt and, 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 and so on. Let us to, just to go to the last artificial lift system, which really it's, it's uh, start to be uh, used more and more uh, with the gas wells and watering gas wells and, uh, and, and uh, in unconventional area and so on. It's called plunger lift. Plunger, it's used to produce always low volume wells, high gas liquid ratio wells. If you have low volume wells, high gas liquid ratio wells, the plunger lift come to the first solutions. What mean of low volume wells? Low volume wells usually wells produce less than 200 barrel per day. However, the majority of plunger lift system is used for to produce wells with 20 barrels, 30 barrels, 50 barrels, 100 barrels, and so on or just can use for gas wells, which is suffering from loading of gas, sorry, loading of liquid or condensates and you need to get rid of that uh, fluid and so on. The good thing of the plunger lift, it's used the well on energy. It doesn't require any external energy. It's used a gas stored in the wells and by a certain plunger here, the plungers can move the fluid automatically of the well. If someone is working oil field and went to the oil field and see some swabbing rigs, it's like what we call automatic swabbing uh, system. What are the main component of the plunger lift to be very clear, you know? In the bottom hole parts, we have only two parts. What we call this is a fixed part called bumper spring parts and bumper spring connecting with the landing tools in, in the bottom bumper spring. Plus we have plunger which is moving up and down. And lubricators installed at the surface which just can receive the, plunge, the plunger and just you know can drop the plunger again. Plus in the surface equipment you have a controllers and the controller since it's not required power, it's can running with only solar panels, small solar panel. A very cheap artificial lift in the capital investment and operating expenses and so on, you know. Gas well, you know, it can be used for gas well liquid loading, uh, dewatering gas wells, unloading gas wells. All this can be, you know, just for gas lift, uh, plunger lift applications and so on, you know. Uh, as, as advantages, not required any source of power, use the gas energy, easy to maintain and change the power is very cheap, very low capital investment, is, is, is excellent for small, field, you know, it's can handle a very high gas ratio wells, but it's limited for the flow rates, uh, sand, if, if there is a sand temperature, because if there is use a rubber system and so on, and requires a lot of optimization and so on. You know. This is generally speaking about different type of artificial lift, what I need uh, for it, what the main component for each system, what are the main system using worldwide and so on. But try, I, I like just you to try to remember, for each type of artificial lift before to select, before to choose, even after you select or your operation, you have a big challenge in gassy wells. You select the right one, how to handle gas, if the gas will be changing with time, if the gas fixed with time, is increasing, you know, heavy crude oils, sand, all this is a very challenge for artificial lift. Very challenge, not only for <coughs> capital investment. You can select capital investment, 
is a very challenge for the operating cost because uh, one of the main important things for artificial lift <coughs> is operating cost and so on. If you use over, uh, offshore, what type of artificial lift I need to use for offshore? How can I optimize my production? It's easy to, to optimize using this type of artificial lift. What type of reservoir? Is it depleted drive reservoir? Or what type of reservoir I have? If the, if the reservoir is pressure constant, depleted, and so on. Uh, one of the other things, you know, just telling in selecting artificial lift again, I like you to remember also, you know, economics is the very important. Economics in operating. Artificial lift is for your life of the wells. Artificial lift, how to optimize the lifting cost. Lifting cost for each well. Try to remember what type of artificial lift for difficult wells. To select the, type, the right artificial lift for your condition, well condition, location, production, whole consideration, what type of full consideration and reservoirs. Uh, also, you know, just uh, you like to remember what you need from your artificial lift. You need to maximize production. In time, you have a in flex flexibility in the artificial lift with a change in production rate. You need to have the lowest per shading cost artificial lift at the capex. You need to have a lower operating cost, high efficiency, consumable equipment, reliability and up times, mean time between failure, you need to monitoring and, and, and so on. You know. uh, thank you. And this is just a very quick you know, overview about artificial lift. As I said initially, you know, this is required more than a month to go on. In, in each type and, and general artificial lift in selection design, optimization, and so on. Uh, thank you, and uh, I think the time now is open for a couple of questions. Uh, thank you very much, Doctor, for this very uh, detailed and informative. Uh, this is not an introduction. This is uh, a PhD. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. We covered thank you. all aspects, and uh, we really enjoyed learning uh, all of Thank this you. information regarding. Thank you. Thank uh, you. So we will start with uh, our questions now. Um, we have uh, a question uh, in ESP. Why the yes. electrical motor in the bottom of the pump, under the pump, why it's not in upper the pump? Uh, I think it will reduce the wire distance. You know, it's, it's not, uh, it's, it will not reduce the wire distance, you know, because what is the length? You know, if, if we run the electric submersible pump for a well with 10,000 feet, you know, and uh, the length of, of the cable of, of, the, of the motors, you know, it's uh, about uh, 40 feet, 60 feet. It's, you are not saving too much, you know. But in the bottom, you know, because if it will be in the top, you know, uh, of the pump, how will drive the pump? You need to drive the pump and you need to separate it, the motor from the as a motor for bump, you need just a separations like a, a protectors and, and so on, you know. This is just a general. Any question? Any more? Um, yes, sorry, I was on mute. <laughs> yeah. uh, if we want to do a frag job and we're having artificial lift at the same time, what, what would be the procedure in this case? Depend on type of artificial lift, you know, if, for example, if you need to do a frag job and with, we have a road lift system or progressive activity pumping system or any pumping system, you need to tree, retrieve the, the system, retrieve the equipment from the wells, you know, you need to retrieve the equipment from the well and you need to know, you know, if you need to retrieve also the tubing or not, you know, can you do frag from the tubing, what's the pressure you require for the frag, because the frag requires a very high pressure. Meanwhile, also how to clean the wells. Uh, you know, after the frack, if you have a frack bag, and so how you need to to do that? Because the procedures is depend on what type. Do I have a electric submersible bump? I need to lift all the completion. Do I have a gas lift? Uh, you know, uh, in general speaking, uh, majority of the people is retrieving the artificial lift, completing and then doing the frack, and then run the electric, is it run the, uh, the, the um, artificial lift. But initially they want to run the artificial lift to clean the well first. Some people are cleaning the well with, uh, with nitrogen or some other. Some other people are cleaning the well using a temporary solution like a, a jet bombing system just to, to clean the well and so on. 
If you have a road lift system, you need to run with a very special downhole pumps, very open pumps, you know, to handle some frack if there is a frack until you reach to that unit. Any more questions? Uh, can I uh, can I use gas lift method to improve a production from a gas reservoir? Yes, if there is a condensate, if if you know, you know, when you need to to improve the production from the gas wells, if the gas wells production start to re decline, when the gas production start to decline, if the back pressure on the formation start to increase. Either if you have a low pressure in the reservoir, uh, or just you have what you call water out, or just waters um, liquids, liquid liquid up on 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 the wells, liquid up on the wells, either just water or condensate. Usually, if the people yes, you can use gas lift, you can combine gas lift, but you know you you need just to have a very specific design, you know, to do that, and you can use intermediate yeah. gas lift in this case. Or you can use a plunger lift, you know, plunger lift, just to like, like a continuous cycling to dewatering all the gas from these wells, you know. Because the, the gas lift, artificial lift, is not a secondary recovery, you know. It's not have no effect for the reservoir. All its effect in the well bore. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, one more yeah. question. One more question we have? Yeah. What kind of problem soccer rod pump can face during lifting operation? Oh, it can have, you know, a lot of problem. One of the main problem is road parted. Road parted is one of the majority of the problem. Two main problem really on, on soccer road, usually majority of the people will face, either in the downhole pumps or in the road string itself. In the road string itself, you can have a parted road string, you know, it's a steel, you know. If you are not run the steel in the proper conditions, or just the proper loading capacity of that, the road can be but this one. Second, the road, if you are not designing the road string in a very good way is with a completion, you can have a friction between the road string and the tubing, and you can create a big problem for the tubing, and this tubing can be cracked, and so on. And this is one of the problem. Another problem, downhole pumps. Downhole pumps, it's up almost 22 pieces. And the 22 pieces is, have a several moving pieces like pole and seat, plungers, uh, valve rod, and so on, you know. If you are not running the pump in the proper condition and you are matching the system design with your production, then you, you will have a big problem for downhole pumps, road string. You can have a problem with the surface equipment, but the majority of surface equipment in the surface and, and you know, it's, it's, you can say three to 4% of the percentage of problem for road lift come from surface. But the majority come from downhole bumps, road string, and tubing string. Okay, uh, one last question. What kind of um, uh, artificial lift is considered to be uh, most cost efficient or cheapest? The cheapest uh, in general, that's right. Whatever artificial lift as the cheapest. Uh, maybe I'm not catching the question. Can you repeat it, please? Hello? However, the artificial lift, the cheapest artificial lift is a plunger lift. But plunger lift cannot be used for all types of artificial lift, for all types of wells. The other cheapest artificial lift can be gas lift if you have a big fields, but the gas lift cannot be used for all type of wells. Maybe I need to have very gas for the gas wells. Progressive cavity, it can be a cheapest artificial lift. What is your cheapest artificial lift? In order to know what's my cheapest artificial lift, I need to do two exercises. First of all, I need to calculate what's the capex. Capex is at zero times. What is, will be my opex? OPEX, you need to predict your operating cost over five years. How much will cost you? Sometimes you will find a system cost you $100,000 initially, but after five years, it, the total lifting cost maybe will $1 million. And another type, maybe it's cost you 
300,000 dollar initially at the initial case, but after five years, maybe the total cost, lift operating cost will be $200,000. Then the cumulative cost, it's how you select your right artificial lift for your field, for your wells, and how you predict the change in your well condition and reservoir condition. You need to change, again, you need to select, design your artificial lift for the life of the well. You need to predict what will be expected. Is the water cut will increase? Is the reservoir under the water injection and expected? I have breakthrough from the water injection and mainly, and sometimes water injection have CO2 and there will be a corrosion. This is just, you know, this is a cost economics, how to, how to be considered. Great. Well, uh, thank you so much, uh, Professor, for this uh, detailed uh, presentation again and for answering all, uh, not all actually, that we have a lot of questions, but maybe uh, they can be sent later on uh, your way. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. It was a pleasure to have you and uh, looking forward to more uh, collaborations like this. Thank you. And any question, please, my email is available. My phone is available. I will be glad to answer in on it.